Hi and welcome to the webinar today, Facebook Basics, where we're going to be looking at pages, groups and Facebook ads. Um, so my name is Matt Wilkinson, I'm the founder and CEO of BizInc and um, I'll soon be handing over to, to Gayatri who's going to be hosting the webinar and um, filling you in on all those Facebook basics. So just before we get going, um, just wanted to do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, so um, first of all, in terms of um, if you've got any problems, questions, anything like that, so any technical issues, if you can fire those into the chat window, and that's in the uh, control panel on the right hand side of the screen. Um, and if you have any questions for Gayatri, um, please do ask those. Use the question window is the best place for that, also in the right hand panel. And um, possibly I'll ask those to her as we go along. More likely we'll, we'll do that at the Q&A at the end and there'll be plenty of time to, to do questions then. So please do ask your questions. Um, as you can see on the screen, if you've got any other applications, particularly ones that are heavy users of the internet, maybe just power those down and that'll help give you a better kind of audio and visual experience. Um, also the handouts and the slides, we've got those um, We've got those sitting in the, the control panel as well, um, and, um, and, and so yeah, you can download those straight from, from there. So we're going to be looking at today, um, look, what, why, why Facebook, why, why it's an important place to be for your firm, um, what's a Facebook business page and what to put on it, Facebook groups, something slightly different and, and how you can use those, what to share in them, and build an online community. Um, and, and the final thing, Facebook advertising, um, big opportunity there, really um, good value advertising platform, can be quite confusing, so Gaitri is going to sort of cut through the, um, some of the confusion through there and explain how that works, and then we'll have some time for questions uh, at the end. So just before I hand over um, uh, she, to, to Gaitri, and she'll, she'll, she'll start the... Um, Start the content in terms of Facebook. Um, just wanted to quickly show you, like I know most of you are going to be happy to do your social media yourself, and this webinar is going to be a launch pad for that. Um, but I know some of you are going to think, hey, that all looks great, but I just don't have the time, or I just can't be bothered to, to do it. You know, it's just going to be a step too far. So I'm going to talk about them a little bit later. We've got some social media packages where you can work with Gayatri and she'll look after your Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever social platforms you're working on um, and you can outsource that work um, to, to her and BizInc. Um, so look, just wanted to introduce that. We're going to show you all about Facebook but if, if that's something you want to um, have us run for you, I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. So look, I'm going to shut up now and hand over to Gayatri. Uh, thanks all for coming today and enjoy the webinar. Hi everyone, uh, thank you so much for coming today. Uh, we review are based in the world. It's, it's great to see a, a good array of people. Um, so as Matt mentioned, today we're going to be going through a very specific uh, webinar and workshop all around Facebook. So a little bit about myself first. Uh, for those of you that can pick up the accent, I am a Kiwi. Uh, I do, however, live over in the UK at the moment. Um, I've worked in the cloud accounting space uh, with accountants, uh, progressive accountants, and also some of the great technology that's out there for the last seven years. Um, I've quite a strong background uh, being a facilitator and, a, uh, and an advisor. And for me, social media, I believe, is a really, really uh, great platform to connect with people uh, over ideas, so not necessarily pre-existing relationships. Of course, there are some exceptions with that with some of the social media platforms, but I love uh, how two strangers or two businesses can connect uh, over a great idea or have a conversation and build a relationship from there. Personally, uh, I love uh, helping people connect to their particular audiences on social media. So why Facebook? I think it's really interesting that there are five new profiles created every second. So approximately, doing a little bit of math here if I've got it right, that will be 18,000 uh, 18, profiles approximately by the end of this webinar. 
So it is the social network leader, leader with the largest audience and growth, far excels anything else. And it's not just for kids. You can see there is a little bit of a, a decreasing percentage of active users as age progresses, but there is still a really, really large percentage of people uh, using Facebook overall. Uh, and in the 50 to 64 year olds, 65 plus year olds, and the 30 to 49 year olds. So it is very likely your clients or your ideal clients are on Facebook. I do also think it's really interesting to point out, having a look at some of the con uh, common industry and uh, businesses and niches out there, whether it be retail, whether it's media and creatives, whether it's technology, uh, having a look at what social channels they're on. Uh, some of them you'll find a little bit more progressive, so they'll be on things like uh, Snapchat as well and, and Pinterest like retailers. However, the big commonality, all of them are always on Facebook and always are quite a predominant uh, exposure and quite a predominant uh, presence to Facebook. So in terms of the different mediums we have, Firstly, there's a personal page. For those of you that are already on our Facebook, you will have a personal page. It's a really nice way to uh, keep up to date with friends, family, maybe people you went to university with, etc. Uh, it looks like the illustration on the left here. That is just a nice screenshot uh, from my uh, personal Facebook page. Uh, ignore the uh, nice shot of my mother and my best friend in there as well. Um, and it is really good for that personal connection there. We also have business pages and we have groups as well. So looking a little bit more into those business pages, it is free advertising for your firm. It's really, really easy to build up your Facebook page in a matter of minutes. So all you really need is your name, your blurb, a profile picture, a cover photo, cover photo and a call to action, and you can make that live. It's a really nice way to add social proof, to be found, increase the client bond, be verified, uh, trustworthy, build those relationships, show that you're a real person in a real business, you've got real people working for you, reinforce those in-person conversations and messaging, great to um, send traffic to your website as well because you can list your URL, often people find you and you can go through to that. Metrics are also included as well, so you've got your Facebook insights, so you can actually see who's liking your page, the commonalities in age groups, location, what content they're clicking on, so give you really good indications of what your audience is, um, is engaging with. Google too, just quick on so Facebook could, pages. Could you just, yeah, no sorry worries. to interrupt, just to make the, yeah, could you just make the yeah, slides full screen? Oh yeah, I can indeed. And they're not full screen at the moment, sorry. No, we've all done, we've all done that before. <laughs> Is that better? Done. Right. Ah, perfect. Sorry, to sorry guys. No, no worries at all. I don't know why it defaulted to that. So uh, sorry if you've been straining your eyes for the last couple of slides, but uh, we've got that sorted now. Um, so just continuing on, we can uh, show up in Google with those Facebook business pages as well. Um, Google really does favour and, and ranks highly those Facebook business pages, so it's always a nice additional way to show up. And I do really love about Facebook, um, you can have a particular type of post for the content that you're sharing. So whether it's a, a blog post, whether it's a video, whether it's something that uh, has a really nice image. Facebook allows you to select the type of post um, to highlight that content the best. It also allows you to manage sections and call to actions as well. So I've just got a little uh, screenshot here of Facebook's business page to point that out a, a little bit uh, easier for you. So the sections that you can manage are just down the left hand side here under the profile photo. So you can actually add additional ones, you can highlight specific things if you're wanting to. We can connect to other uh, platforms. We can, of course, have those uh, nice profile and cover images and that call to action as well. So whatever you're wanting people to do from your uh, Facebook page. I do also like, I don't know uh, any of you have seen it lately, if you've landed on a business's page, um, something relatively new that Facebook has uh, rolled out is if uh, you land on a business page, that person, whoever's running it or someone that is an admin on it is active, it actually pops up and it allows you to um, have a Facebook conversation with them, Facebook chat, 
So it really does encourage that interaction with the uh, Facebook pages. So in terms of what content you can do, the most successful Facebook posts are two to three sentences long um, to give a little bit of contents there. They either have a video, image, or content to link out to that users will really enjoy. They're positive, uh, they also encourage interaction. And if you do have a really good uh, Facebook post that you think uh, it's done great, um, you'd love to reuse it, nice little tip is, is if you actually comment on your own post, it'll bring it back up in the new news feed as well of your uh, people that uh, are your fans. Other great content uh, that you can focus on and, and use is events. Facebook is a great platform for you allowed to, to do that uh, yourself, create that event and invite your fans to, along to it. You can even invite uh, additional people through their email address as well, so they don't necessarily have to be a direct fan of your Facebook page. Good way to entice them. Great to use the imagery as well. So we saw the cover uh, or header image there in the profile photo. They don't have to stay stagnant. If you want to highlight a client quote, if you want to maybe do something seasonal, it's a really nice way to change that up and to uh, engage people and to give a little bit of uh, visual diversity there. Also, longer, more detailed posts do do uh, well on Facebook. Obviously, dependent on the content, I wouldn't be saying to do them every single time. Um, but if you are wanting to talk a little bit more about something, give a little bit more context. Facebook is definitely the platform that allows you to do so. It's a really great place to also highlight your client successes and your testimonials. You can have the Facebook reviews on your business page, but however, if you've got something on your website or you've got a great testimonial, it's a great platform to do so and to share that. Any blogs that you do, uh, if you are part of the business blogging pack, it is really, really good to uh, include those and to promote those out there. Or if you've got any other blogs, it's a great platform to share those. Any videos, Facebook Live as well, if you're wanting to do something live in the spur of the moment, uh, create a bit of uh, movement around that. Anything out and about behind the scenes as well. Uh, we are curious keep creatures, so we like to know what goes on behind a business, who's there, what happens at a client meeting, what sort of businesses you may uh, visit. Anything like that is always great content. So in terms of Facebook groups, a Facebook group always supplements your business page. So even if you create a Facebook group, you are still always wanting a Facebook page for your business. What I love about groups is they offer a more intimate and targeted experience to connect for users. You can also um, verify your expertise for a group and um, portray those out there as well. By default, members will receive notifications, which is really, really cool. Um, so anytime someone posts in the group, um, by default, someone will get a nice little notification when they log into Facebook or if they have those notifications on their mobile device, that can pop up as well. I don't know about you, but um, if I'm in Facebook and a notification comes up, I can't help but look at it. Um, I'm a curious one, <laughs> as a lot of us are. So it's a really nice way to uh, ensure that that content in the group has been seen. Also, it's a really good way to collaborate between members and to get that community feel and group feel going. As there is, um, any members can post, they can upload photos, uh, they can invite others as well and make that uh, really a shared ownership. Of course, you're going to be uh, running it behind the scenes and set it up, but there can be more of that collaboration and shared ownership aspect there. So just to give you a little screenshot of the group here, uh, this is Ascend, which is uh, BizInc's marketing support for busy accountants and bookkeepers. Uh, a great group, if I do say so myself. It hasn't been going uh, too, too long. But what I do really love about um, Ascend is that you go in there, there's people helping each other, there's people asking uh, questions of what type of marketing they're trying to do in their uh, accounting firm or bookkeeping practice or they're potentially looking at a new platform or a piece of technology and they're crowdsourcing, asking others for their feedback, their information. Um, I definitely gain a lot from it. So uh, any group that has that as a purpose and has that collaboration is always really going to do well. So quite often I get asked about groups versus pages. So just to give it a really nice uh, summary, in terms of privacy for groups, there is more privacy available. So you can have secret and closed groups. 
I think this is really good for uh, accountants and bookkeepers in particular, because if you're wanting to give a little bit of business advice, if you're wanting to encourage a platform where people um, discuss their businesses, different aspects, maybe um, hurdles that they've had while growing their business or issues that they're having at that moment, that privacy uh, really allows them to uh, feel comfortable doing it and give it that platform that um, you know, they, they feel that what they're going to add to it, um, what they may share, sorry, other people are going to add to that as well. As opposed to a page, the page information for a business page and posts are public. So they're generally available to everyone on Facebook. In terms of the audience, you can adjust group privacy in a group to require members to be approved or added by uh, admins. I always think in terms of an accountancy practice or a bookkeeping firm, I think this is a great way to go. Um, so you can really vet and know who's going in there. If you're wanting to maybe make something really client and, um, and prospect specific, or maybe you're wanting to make something really specific to an industry or a niche that you work with, really good way to assure that you're getting quality members in that group. Whereas a page, anyone can like a page to connect with it and get newsfeed updates. Also around the communication aspects, in a group, members can receive notifications by default, so they actually have to go in and, and turn that off if they do bother to do so. And group members can participate in chats, they can upload photos, they can share albums, they can collaborate on group documents, they can invite in other um, members as well, um, and for, uh, friends to group events. However, in a page, people who help manage the page, so they the admin, if you've got anyone else that is uh, delivering content on it, they can publish posts as the page. People can comment on it, of course. However, those page posts can only appear in the newsfeed of people who like the page. Um, and as with Facebook algorithms go, sometimes as word or like. So in terms of what content uh, is great to provide in a group, it's good to highlight and provide a more variety of content, uh, pose questions, tell stories, use language that really encourages dialogue and, and engagement between members. <clears throat> I always see it being uh, really good having themes or days for specific topics. Maybe you might have, um, just off the, the top of my head here, Technology Tuesday, where you talk about um, the greatest technology that small businesses are using that maybe you see other members you might crowdsource and ask other members what technology they're really loving at the moment um, it may be something personal like um, a specific app that they're using on their phone or it may be something really business focused that everyone can learn from also i i think some of the best groups the common a really big commonality they have is drawing on known expertise of other members in the group to encourage that community feel and to make them feel welcome members as well. So if you know that you've got a, uh, say a small business in there that has just achieved a particular turnover or maybe they've got their X amount of client, highlighting that and saying, hey, um, I just saw ABC that you um, just reached a really good milestone in terms of uh, clients. Would you like to share a little bit about how you got to that? I'm sure there's some other members in the group that would like to know. Anything like that, encouraging that collaboration. Um, it's pretty easy content as, as someone in a, a group because you're not having to come up with something yourself or create a blog or whatnot, but you're really encouraging that nice feel and that group feel. In terms of now Facebook ads, so what actually makes a good ad? Facebook is about sharing. Um, no one comes to Facebook to be sold something. However, it is a very good platform to sell on. So the best ads are always visual, they're relevant, they include an enticing value proposition, and they have a clear call to action. So visual content is treated more favorably by Facebook. Um, it's also more likely to be shared and remembered as well. So if you're ever wanting to create an ad, always spend a lot of time looking at that visual that's alongside it and what you're producing with it. No matter what type of ad you're producing, it needs to be visually appealing. So it needs to be something that catches someone's eye. They think, oh, I want to have a little look at that. What's that about? It sounds obvious, but it has to be relevant. I do see quite often ads that um, what their outcome is isn't really specified or who they're wanting to target isn't really relevant to their ideal client or the type of business that they're wanting to engage with. 
has to include that enticing value proposition as well. So why should they click? How are you different? How are you different as an accountant or bookkeeper? What can they learn from you? What are you giving them? And without a call to action, a clear call to action, the viewer may not know what to do next. So you need to add a little bit of urgency or directly tell them what they can do next. So in terms of Facebook ads and what type of types there are, just gone one uh, slide forward, sorry, we'll just go back there. So there are lots of different types of ads. So the most common one, uh, if you've engaged with any ads or, or when you are on Facebook, uh, you will see is the link ad. So this helps promote your external website, your accounting or bookkeeping website, and it helps you send people to specific landing pages or blog posts. So if you are wanting to talk about um, a specific offering, maybe a webinar, a, a great blog post that you've done, uh, the most common one is a link ad. Of course, it uh, will always include a, an, an image there alongside it as well, um, but that will be a really specific uh, ad with a call to action to go to that specific landing page or blog post. Facebook video ads are always uh, another really co uh, common and popular platform, but they are actually another form of the link ad. All that's different there is that uh, you're allowed to put in a lovely video instead of uh, a still image. I don't know if any of you using your uh, business page at the moment have created a post and either been told by uh, Facebook to boost it, uh, to promote their advertising, or you've seen that little boost button. So that's something that quite a lot of people interact with a lot. Um, you are actually, it's something that you can set up target audiences and bidding methods with. I will talk a little bit more about target audiences in the next slide. Um, and it's a great way to uh, post and um, promote your page to more people across Facebook's advertising network. I do say be careful that there is a word of caution with this because uh, the default is genuinely set by Facebook. Um, you can do some great targeting on that, and I will uh, touch on that next. But uh, do always have a little look and, and have a little play before you do agree to boost that post. Lastly, there are lead ads. So this allows people to download your content or to sign up to your offer without leaving the Facebook platform. So it might, makes it a really nice user experience for them and it's perfect for capturing emails. So as uh, a, a lot of us know, the sales cycle with uh, bookkeepers and accountants are generally a little bit longer. So capturing those emails, having a lead ad like that is a really nice way to uh, get someone's email, offer them some more marketing, follow up with them, and to keep yourself front of mind so when they are ready to make that change, you're the first person that they think of. There are some additional features with uh, Facebook ads. So in terms of retargeting and custom audiences as well. So people really buy from you the first time they visit their site or they see an offer, unless they're in dire need, you know, they've um, associated themselves or found themselves that they really need an accountant or bookkeeper and they need it then and there. Normally due to something going wrong in the business or they've missed a deadline or, or somewhat. So in terms of the general people, they may uh, be curious, take a look around, um, but they really buy and, and become someone um, to uh, become a client for that first interaction. So the goal of retargeted content is to place your brand or your accounting firm, your bookkeeping practice front of mind. So common strategies to retarget or remarket to people who have already visited your site. So people that have maybe landed on your, your homepage, maybe had a look at your services, uh, a particular blog post, you can be as specific as you like with this. You can also retarget to existing Facebook fans. You can do that within Facebook and also email subscribers or any other lists. So there is integrations between our email platforms, any of you using them, or if you have a CSV output of email uh, lists, email addresses and email list that you can upload, you can actually retarget those people. I do also uh, say with this, just be a little bit cautious because I know for myself, uh, my Facebook uh, email address is very different to my business's address as well. So there can be a little, a little bit of hesitation around there, but done right, done well, it can be really, really effective. So the trick to that uh, retargeting content is to have a precise audience rather than uh, a somewhat generalized audience. So then that precise audience is more or more likely to be interested in learning more about your business or your services. 
Many of your users do also have overlapping demographics, interests and behaviours. So maybe they are based in a certain commonality, uh, maybe if, if you've got an industry niche or vertical, they may like uh, specific pages on uh, Facebook that relate to those industry and uh, niches or verticals. They may be around the same age group. Um, they may be in a very specific regional area if you're operating within a city in a city only. You can actually create custom audiences targeting these people that share similar characteristics to your existing connections. So this is a really nice and easy way uh, to extend your reach, to have a look at what similarities your uh, audience and your fans uh, and people visiting your site already have, and extending those to people that are similar. So these do require a little bit more setup and technical aspects. To retarget, you do need a little uh, piece of code that sits on your website. Uh, BizInc can definitely help with this. If you do already have a BizInc site, uh, have a chat to, to Matt and the team and they can organise this and get this set up. Once that little hard bit's done, uh, all of that information gets pulled directly into Facebook and it's nice and easy to work for, from there. I do normally like to uh, share some nice um, illustrations of great Facebook ads done by uh, bookkeepers and accountants. However, and interestingly, I couldn't actually find too many when I did do a um, we searched and, and had a look around for things. So um, for those of you on the webinar, great, uh, because you know that there's not uh, many good examples existing out there at the moment, so a really good opportunity to do something really well. Um, but sorry, I couldn't show you something uh, specific to, to show a little bit more about what I mean there. So in terms of what content for these ads, um, really reinforcing that great imagery, you've really got to lead with the imagery, what's going to catch someone's eye, whether that's a video, whether that's a still image, something that really um, catches the eye, talks about um, what the offering is or what you're, what you're wanting to portray, and also really always stick with your branding. So you can't really um, go off something that is very different colors or fonts. There's got to be a, a relation between what they're clicking on, what that image is, and where you're taking them to. So whether it's uh, a resource that they're downloading, whether it's your website, whether it's something else, you want them to visually see that link. So you don't want them clicking on something that's uh, pink, purple, um, some random photos on it, and then they're going through to a website that has none of that same imagery, colors, um, language, or content. Something that they can also interact with as well. So something that perks a little bit of interest, maybe they can like, something that is gonna want to make them learn more. Also, it could be an offer as well. Um, you will see a lot of product-based businesses doing offers, whether it's 20% off, whatnot. It could be an offer for a free webinar, a free event, um, maybe set up of a particular accountancy software or um, a particular technology platform that's going to save their business time. Whatever it may be, there could be that offer as well. So things that I see uh, work really commonly are things like downloading the latest findings on the top performing um, XYZ businesses, maybe that's agency, maybe that's retail, trades and services. Things like uh, downloading a checklist to future-proof your business, um, learning what technology the UK's top performing businesses are using, or New Zealand's, or the USA's, or London's, however that might be, that sort of content that makes someone think and go, oh, I wonder what's going on, I want to learn a little bit more about that. So lastly, just want to talk a little bit quickly about starting your audiences. So if you are looking at uh, getting onto to Facebook and you haven't already, starting at your business page or your group, it's a really good place to start is start by following, adding and liking your staff, anyone in your network, um, anyone that knows you, clients that you currently have, and industry thought leaders as well. From there, you will also get some uh, suggestions. So look at these regularly and, and follow those who fit your profile. Also great to always let people know. I quite often see people uh, build up a, a business profile, a business page on Facebook and sit there and, and not let anyone else know. Um, if people don't know, they're don't, not gonna know how to find you in the first place. So a really good way to, to get that good uh, start off with the following and the fans is to let your staff, let your clients and, and let anyone in your network know. I always think the more personally you do this, the better. Something like, um, hey Gayatri, 
we're really excited and interested to start up our uh, business page. We really want to uh, connect with you more as a client and uh, show you what we can do and, and offer some of our insights to help you and your business. Here's a link to it. Um, please let me know what you think. If you have any feedback or anything you'd like to see, love to hear from you. Something really personal like that makes people think that there's a reason for them to join. Um, you're going to have some great content on there. And, you know, hey, there are going to be some clients that will have some great ideas for you as well, which if you incorporate, always strengthens that relationship. Also quite popular is to start competitions. I do always say be very cautious and have a look at those Facebook uh, guidelines. A good 70 to 80% of the copy, uh, competitions you see do actually break those guidelines. They are very specific. Um, I don't really know of anyone that has been penalised yet, but it is something that can be done and you definitely don't want that occurring for a business page. Also yourself, uh, as, as your personal uh, profile, participate in different groups or chats and networks. A great way for, for you as a business owner or or an accountant or a bookkeeper to participate in, in other like-minded groups, share your insight. Um, I always say share first and then link back to yourself later. Also email signatures as well, really nice and easy to add a little icon linking to your Facebook profile page there, um, whether it be the URL or a little Facebook icon so people can nice and easily uh, find you. Also your website, um, some people like to put it in the header or footer banner on the Contact Us page. I know uh, for me personally, if, if someone's got their Facebook profile or their Twitter profile link, uh, linked on their website, I always like to have a nosy. I think it gives you a little bit more insight into who you're working with or who you're potentially looking at working with. So I always think it's a really nice thing to include. Also your blog as well, you can have those buttons on your blog, any newsletters, business cards, any collateral or marketing material if you have anything physical. Um, if you are listed on any directories, uh, maybe as a Xero accountant or a QBO accountant, ask to have those added on as well. And also any partnership sites you're listed on. So I'm just going to pass it over to Matt now. Um, if you do have any questions, I have seen uh, some come through. We're going to uh, break into the Q&A shortly. I'm going to mute myself and have a little sip of water. And um, Matt's just going to collate those questions and, and ask them of me and we'll have a really nice discussion around it. Um, so please pop anything you do have through into that question panel and we'll get to it. Um, for anyone that does need to leave us to uh, start their day or finish their day wherever you're based, um, thank you very, very much for joining and please do get in contact if you have any questions you'd like to follow up outside of this. Awesome, thanks very much Gayatri. Um, and you'll get into questions in just a second. We've had quite a few come in. Um, so hopefully you've seen the, the potential of Facebook, which is pretty massive and, and what it could do for your firm. And I'm sure some of you are itching to get started um, and, and, and get into, into marketing with Facebook. But I know some of you are thinking, look, that's great and I'll never get round to it. So just wanted to let you know about these uh, new social media packages that we've got at BizInc. And that's where you could be working with Gayatri, who can help you get your social media profile set up the right way um, and then manage them for you. So completely outsource your, your social media uh, marketing. So you can see those on screen. I've popped a link into the chat if you want to go and check them out on the, the Bizink website. And we'll, um, when we send out the recording of the webinar, we'll include a little bit of more information in, in there as well. So um, yeah, we've got a few questions coming in now. Um, um, are, you, um, are you refreshed, Gertrude, and ready to go? Yes, I am indeed. <laughs> Good. Good. I know you've been suffering with... Um, a bad throat, haven't you? So thanks for personally. Yeah, I, I've had it on and off for the for the last couple of weeks, and I'm really glad that my voice has held out because I was a uh, a little bit concerned. <laughs> That's good. No, it sounded fine. Okay. Um, so first um, question from Janelle was, um, what is meant by a bidding method? I have no idea. So <laughs> yeah, over to you. Um. I'm guessing that you're talking about specifically in the Facebook advertising. So bidding methods depending on um, your cost per click um, or how you want to pay for the particular actions that people um, take on your ad, if that makes uh, a little bit more sense to put it in the really simple terms that I understand. 
Um, if you um, had something specific that you wanted to ask about bidding methods. Yeah, fire it in Janelle if that didn't answer it, and, and we'll come back to that one. Um, I'll just move on to another question. Um, yeah, so, so Janelle's just asking just what it relates to, so um, I'm, I'm hoping, yeah, that's what you've just covered off there, Gertrude. Yeah, I hope so. If not, um, please do just re-ask it. Um, I, I don't want to bore you with loads of detail if, if you're not interested, <laughs> but more than happy to answer more questions around it. What I'll do, guys, actually, I'm just going to put a link to um, our Facebook group, which is a marketing support group for um, accountants and bookkeepers. So I'm just going to paste that into the chat window. Now, the um, reason why I'm doing that as well is that we've got a social media panel on today. So on a Wednesday, we have um, a panel day, and Gayatri's part of that panel, and Rhiannon, who's a social media expert uh, out of Australia. Um, so if you've got any other questions, um, we can carry on the discussion in there as well if you want to, you know, we can get a bit more detailed in there. Um, so moving on, I've got a question from um, um, Eleanor and she's asking, um, how, how do you think basically Facebook and LinkedIn compare? Um, is, it, is it better? Is it equal to? Um, what, what are your thoughts on that? Um, so I think they're really, really different um, platforms. Um, I see LinkedIn personally as, as more of a personal development uh, networking connections on a person-to-person um, -person basis. Um, they do obviously have those business pages as well, um, company pages, and they do have groups. Um, in terms of the personal profiles, um, Facebook I see as being a very personal platform, so you're often uh, keeping in touch with your friends, family, what such and such is doing from uni, whereas LinkedIn is um, a bit more of an online CV, allows you to publish articles or, or content that um, exemplifies your expertise. Um, in terms of the company pages there, um, the company pages are not quite uh, ranked as highly uh, on Google as Facebook and the company pages on LinkedIn are more geared towards um, highlighting your careers, uh, highlighting uh, jobs that you may have absent. It's not to say that you can't share other content, other content does do uh, great as well, um, but LinkedIn being that sort of networking, um, more careers platform, a lot of their features are geared more towards uh, sharing that sort of content well. Um, and then in terms of groups, uh, the groups on, on LinkedIn, I think if they uh, invest a little bit of time uh, and effort into the user interface and how that works, uh, they will be absolutely fantastic. At the moment, uh, Personally, I find them a bit spammy. Uh, you don't have notifications in terms of uh, content very well. Um, they are quite hard to navigate uh, and they're quite hard to sort of um, just really get front of mind with them. Um, so I think Facebook has really come in and, and stolen their thunder there. Um, and lastly, with the advertising, I mean, the advertising on LinkedIn is, is good. You can do uh, some great advertising uh, in terms of portraying your content, uh, website, things that go on, um, but they don't have the, the features that Facebook have either. I do think, uh, lastly, that LinkedIn is one to watch. Um, I do think there are some things in the pipeline there that they think they need to um, do and um, the type of following that they have at the moment, if they get it right, uh, I think they could do some really, really good things. Yeah, I couldn't agree more on that. Actually, it's the, the potential of LinkedIn is huge, but um, it's held back by, the groups is a great example, right? Like I, I know somebody yeah, has yeah. a group of about 5,000 on Facebook, which is, unbelievably active you know there's people dropping in questions you know by the minute they've got 7,000 in the LinkedIn group they mm. had two comments in a month yeah. <laughs> so that, that 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 tells you the the, the difference and um, I, I totally agree with you I've found everything that I've done through LinkedIn is through my personal profile yeah. groups Bit, bit, bit of a waste of time so yeah, I think like definitely want to watch with that regard but right now um, Certainly when we were choosing where to set up our group, like the one I've just posted in there, the Facebook group, you know, we were like, well, should we go LinkedIn, should we go Facebook, should we go both? We just decided to go 100% Facebook and um, it, it really paid off. Definitely, yeah. Um, Lucinda's got a question which is, uh, why is it important to use a different email than your business email? 
in terms of your Facebook profile or I presume um, so yeah I mean is that important or do you think I mean I use so I just say something quickly with what, what I do I have a my personal Facebook and I have a work one as well mm. um, so is, is that something you would you would recommend I think it really depends um, I can see merit in both. For me personally, I have my personal uh, profile and my personal profile only, um, and I only accept people that I've had a conversation with um, or I've talked to. You can also set up um, visibility restrictions. Um, so there may be um, some people that I know uh, in a work acquaintance sense that um, I have on a little bit more of a restricted visibility on my personal profile um, because my mother dear and some of my friends like to occasionally, uh, especially on my birthday, post uh, embarrassing younger photos of myself, which I don't really <laughs> think some of these work acquaintances are going to be too, uh, <laughs> too interested in. Um, so that is one way to manage it. If you are just starting your um, Facebook profile at the moment, there's no reason why you can't use your um, business email address. Um, there's, there's nothing wrong with it at all. It just so happened when I started my uh, Facebook profile that I went with the email address I, I had at the time, uh, which you know my business one currently didn't exist um, and that's what what you're stuck with um, there are some people that are longer Facebook users that have that in common as well so I do say if you're ever doing retargeting around email addresses just to be aware of that um, you know someone's yeah. business address doesn't necessarily mean that that's their Facebook login address as well yeah right um question I would have that I think a few people might think of and I, I've been asked it before Say on LinkedIn, right? It's you know it's quite accepted to just connect with somebody. It's kind of business, mm -hmm. and it's a bit more sort of um, um, business-like in a way, you know. Whereas, like yeah. you know, you, you might see your clients and some prospects on Facebook, and and it, what do you think is the protocol there with with connecting with them? I think it really um, depends on you as an individual. Um, how you use your Facebook profile, but also how uh, the people connected to you are, because you know you may use your Facebook profile in a really professional way. But as the example of my mother, um, for my mum who is a prolific poster on my Facebook page, or <laughs> tagger, you know, for her Facebook is just a personal medium. So you've just got to be aware of the community that you're connected to and how you use that as well and whether that uh, profile in the entirety and community in the entirety is what you want to present to, to prospects and to clients. Um, for some people, I've got someone uh, I used to work with uh, who is absolutely fantastic. Uh, her, she connected with everyone she ever came into um, connection with on a personal uh, professional level. She was a great cyclist, she's got a beautiful family. She was very happy and content about sharing this. Um, and it helped her because it helped her form those um, personal connections faster. So it, it, yeah, it's just really dependent on your personal preferences, whether you're okay with um, people in your community potentially posting some more personal things about you or tagging you in on something you've done on the weekend and whether you're okay with some of your more professional uh, contacts knowing that information about you. Cool. Yeah, that's, that's an awesome answer. Um, Karen asks, "What is a Slack group?" Um, so that that's not a group where nobody posts in. That's actually Slack is um is a um application. Uh, it's basically an internal communications application. We use it at Bizinc, you, you, and you use it, don't you, with um Gaia. It's just like a, it's kind yeah. of like instant messaging for companies. Um, it's it's hard to explain how good it is until you use it. But um, I always say um, instant messaging and collaboration on steroids. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's, 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 that makes it almost sound like some kind of like Skype or Messenger. But when you use it, it's, it's really really good. Anyway, long story short, you know we use it so we don't send emails internally. Um, a Slack group is basically just um, like a forum. And so, so everyone can contribute to that. So it's kind of like a closed group, a bit like a closed Facebook group, but it, it just has the sort of chat in it. And it, it tends to be something that a business would set up and invite people into. And that about covers it, doesn't it? 
Yeah, it's it's got that instantaneous more feel. Um, I mean, for us uh, in in our firm, we definitely use it to cut down on um, email to also help um, share information and quick information between. Um, different people in, in different offices. You can set up different groups in there as well. So say you can have something that's just social related for people that want to grab an after, um, after work drink or you can have something client focused where people can discuss client issues, um, whatever it may be. Um, I think why we're struggling a little bit to explain it is because it's so adaptable that so many different businesses, firms, etc., use it in different ways. Um, and they have so many integrations available that you can integrate it to your email, you can integrate it to Google Drive, you can integrate it to Dropbox, you can integrate it to Twitter. Um, so I think with Slack, the, the sky's the limit. And if you're wanting to um, help with that internal uh, communication and that um, workflow, uh, it's fantastic. I'll definitely recommend it. Yeah, same. It's, it's been a big benefit for us at BizInc. I just posted a link to it in the chat anyway, so if anyone wants to check it out. And it, it's free uh, to get started with anyway, and you know, um, so, so it's worth checking out. Um, got a question from Kerry, which is, um, um, let me just see what we've got here. Okay, so it's basically saying, w would you use a business Facebook page or a community page for groups on Facebook, um, or, um, or, or or Google Plus is mentioned in there as well. I mean, like a few things to address this. So number one, Google Plus, pretty much dead. Would you agree? Or... Yeah, I mean, it's 50-50. It's I have hope that they will revamp it and do something great with it at some point. Um, I do, I, it's not to say that I don't see people uh, doing great things on it and getting great results. It's something personally I haven't uh, over the years, so it's it's been on the bottom of my sort of social media profiles to activate for a business or to use for a business. Mm. Um, in terms of Facebook, um, so I never see a Facebook business page and a Facebook group as mutually exclusive. Um, mm. I always think they target very different things. So for example, if, if you're wanting to be found on Google or had that other verified source, your group never is going to be that your Facebook page is. Um, also, your Facebook page is, is really good. Um, some of the type of content that you may want to share Facebook pages have a really good way of allowing you to get the best out of that content so you can choose the way that you post that content, whether it's an image post, whether it's a carousel image post, whether it's a video, whatnot. Um, and also with, with those Facebook pages, whoever is the admin and whoever else you nominate to post content are the only people that can post content. Um, so it is a lot more one-sided. Whereas that group is really around that collaboration aspect, you can have um, you know, particular clients or prospects, maybe you work in a particular niche, so it could be something around um, excelling for retail stores. You can make it you know, generic but specific at the same time to your expertise rather than um, Gayatri's accounting firm group, um, so to speak. Um, and anyone in that group can collaborate, they can share anything, um, it becomes you know, a, a resource to learn off each other and, and to talk about your expertise and to add uh, your opinion and your value. Um, in terms of how you post in that group, um, you have to post from your personal profile, so it has to be, you know, Matt Wilkinson has posted such and such, or Gayatri Wood has posted such and such. You don't um, post in that group as, you know, BizInc or ABC Accounting Limited. Um, so I think in that in that way it is actually good because you know the person that you're talking to rather than the business, um, but that still links back to the business as well. So hopefully that up answers that for you. If if not, please do uh, re-ask and happy to, to answer more on that. Yeah, just following on from um, um, what you're saying there, like posting as you personally, I have a question from Anne and she's, she says she can't see how you can still successfully separate the personal um, and business on Facebook and um, just before I get your opinion on that, I guess that's something that um, I had reservations about when we were doing more with Facebook. So, so I just created, you know, a Matt Wilkinson uh, business profile. Uh, like, if you looked at my normal Facebook 
it's, it's basically I just do I, I like rock climbing I like climbing mountains and that's all that's all I do on Facebook it's just <laughs> pictures of that Whereas I've got a bit more of a straight picture of me on my normal one I, I still post a few too many not up a mountain that's, <laughs> that's another thing but basically um, you know I don't do family stuff with that profile so I just log in under that one and that's what I do with the group that's what I'm connecting with people um, so I think you can separate it very um, strictly in that way, but also, you know, what I've found is what works best with, I mean, social media, right? It's it's media, but the main the main thing I think the power of it is the social part, and Absolutely. so you don't necessarily have to share personal information, but you do to to do it well. I think you need to share personality, and 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 give a bit of yourself. Um, now that doesn't mean that yeah you have to reveal everything about yourself, but I think the social part is really important. You know, what, what would you say about that in terms of um, that separation? And it's it's a, it's a blurring, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and I mean I completely agree. I see more and more people doing that. Um, I haven't done it myself personally. Um, I'm quite happy at the moment with the people I'm connected with or, or the groups I participate in to use my personal profile. Um, if I feel a connection with someone, um, I control it in the way that, or someone offers to, to be my friend, so to speak. If I've actually connected with them or had a conversation with them and I know them, I'm happy to accept them. I may just put them a, a little bit more on a restricted um, viewing so they can't see everything on my profile. Um, but I think Nat's way, I think he does it really well. Um, it is a really clean cut, nice way to, to have that little bit of separation. Um, and as Matt says, it, it's it's still him. Um, he's just not um, sharing some of the maybe more personal details about his life. And also um, he's controlling a bit more with that profile um, who's connected from a work circumstance. So he probably won't, I, I don't know if you do, but you probably won't um, accept your friends on that profile, for example, or your family. So you don't have any encroachment of, of them tagging you in doing something or, yeah. or posting something or whatnot. Um, so it can easily be definitely separated. Yeah, my friends are, are reprobates, so that's why I do it as well. I don't want them any, anywhere near my business profile. <laughs> Very that's wise. That's what I'm worried about. <laughs> um, so um, Lucinda's asking a question, which is, um, you know, what what is the number of uh, of of likes? Um, that that you know, she's asking how to get more likes. Basically, I mean, first of all. Is that even important? It depends. Like Likes are a, a bit of a vanity metric, I think. They can be a little bit more misleading. Um, I always say it's better to have 50 or 100 people that are fans of your page that engage with your content, really like what you're posting, um, comment on it or like it, read it, than to have 1,000 people and you may get one or two comments or likes. Um, it's, it's always quality over, over quantity in these things. Saying that, um, you know, if, if you have a small number of likes, um, you're less likely, you know, very small number, you are less likely for that content to be seen. Um, but no matter what, uh, it's really good to have that Facebook business profile set up because it is an extra mechanism for people to find you um, when they may Google about your firm or your location or what you do. Um, and using some of those strategies I talked about in the last couple of slides, you can actually build up a following really fast. Like I'm sure if you sit here and you draw up a map and think about, um, you know, your top clients that you invite, your staff, um, maybe some people that you know about your business or um, you chat to about your business or a mentor or, and then you start to think about your family and your friends and people that know about your business and supported you through the year that will be really interested or supported you through your journey rather that would be really interested in seeing the content and seeing you succeed quite often you can draw up between 20 to 50 people just like that and if you're sending something personal when you're when you're inviting them especially if it's clients saying why you set this up or why it's there or the fact that you have something running and you'd like to use it more um, you'd love it if they came in and um, tell could look at the page let you know what they think is there anything that you'd like to that they would like to see on there you'll start to see those numbers and that engagement and interest uh, rise together 
Yeah, cool. Um, and I think like, you know, th th that network aspect's really important, you know, just as I think I've come to really appreciate, you know, it, the social media thing that I said before, you know, the social is the important part. And, you know, if you, you can find 20, you know, friendly people and they mm -hmm. each know 20 people, you know, that that's the power of social media, isn't it? It's that network effect, um, which, which is actually, you know, more powerful than likes in the end is, is building out that network. Um, Absolutely. And I always think as well, like, um, I don't know about any of you, but I think of the amount of people you know through, uh, whether it be high school or uni or the gym or a club that you belong to, how many of them can actually articulate properly what you do? Like, above and beyond a bookkeeper or accountant can articulate who you like to work with, the small businesses, etc. You may actually be surprised if you invite some of those to your network whether they may need your services and that conversations never come up because your friends rather than business are acquaintances or allies or also do they know someone that um, knows about your services so keeping front of mind in that way assures in, in your own network that if they hear of someone that needs an accountant or bookkeeper they're going to think of you first and they know exactly what you do and they know a little bit more about your expertise and your specialization through the content that you're posting and what you're sharing yeah and literally that is such a, an important point in, in all of your marketing right is that you know you've got to tell people what you do every, everyone you meet um, I remember hearing the story of a guy who went round and you know everyone he met they sort of knew what he did and he said how are you going? And he'd be like, yeah, I'm pretty busy. And he just used to say that mm -hmm. to everyone. And then he got to a point where he hardly had any work and he was still telling people he was busy. And then he decided one day to say to someone like, I, I could really do with some work. Do you know anyone? And they went, yeah, of course, but you always told me you were really busy. So I didn't want mm -hmm. to bother you. <laughs> and so there's always people, you know, who, who are potential clients. It's not, you've got to be selling all the time. Just no. letting people know what you're doing. Social is a perfect place to do that. Absolutely, and you know they may not need you at that particular point of time, but they know enough about you that when they do need you, they know exactly where to come. For sure. Um, so we're just coming up to the hour now. Um, I've I've got a question from Ron, and, and maybe have time for one more. If anyone's got any any questions, to fire them in. Um, appreciate all the questions you've been been sending in. It's been a really good session. Um, so a question from Ron is, how can he check the performance of his Facebook ad through the Facebook ad manager? Yep, so if you go onto the particular advert that you've set up, uh, they will have metrics within it. So you can see, um, depending on what type of ad it is, what the exposure has been, uh, if you've got a link or your giving them an offer or to download something you can see how many people have actually done that and what the cost has been for that um, if you are looking for a little bit more technical way or something to, to be a bit more assured you can set up tags in Google Analytics if you do have Google Analytics operating on your site uh, it is slightly more technical so whoever does your site uh, you would need to go to them to get that set up um, additionally, you can also uh, implement that the Facebook pixel that helps with retargeting because you can see um, from your audience if you're um, portraying asking them to do something or asking them to go to your site, how many people are completing that. So those are just additional nice ways if you'd like to get a little bit more advanced than what's offered within the uh, Facebook ad manager platform itself. Cool. Um... So yeah, no more questions coming in. Let's wrap it up there. That's been an awesome session. Um, so thank you very much for your time, Gayatri. Awesome presentation, and, and thanks for answering all those questions. Oh, you're very, very welcome. I absolutely loved it. If anyone does think of anything else at a, at a later date, um, please do email, email through, um, get in touch with Matt and myself. Um, there should be an email that, that pops up um, after the webinar, so just reply to that if you do think of anything or um, get to us through social media as well. Uh, probably my Twitter or my LinkedIn is uh, very, very good options. But we'd definitely love to chat more and, and hear any feedback that you do have about the webinar. Good stuff. Uh, thank you. And thank you to everyone for coming along today. Um, as I said, we'll send out the recording um, and, and some links to stuff that we've talked about in the webinar today. So yeah, enjoy the rest of your morning, day or evening, wherever you are. Um, yeah, see you later. Thanks, guys. See you later. Bye-bye.